Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of Jesus in the temple, but really it is, there's, it's just the New Testament. I'm trying to break up the Old Testament and the New Testament. The temple in the Old Testament and the temple in the New Testament, different things. So, get your King James Bible. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Corinth was a city in Greece. Paul went there, preached, started a church, a home church, which is what the future is going to come to with the, uh, probably in the near future. All your organized churches are, well, let's just say they're, their business is chartered by the state, 501c3, tax-exempt businesses chartered or incorporated by the state of their domicile, I guess you could say. Wherever the building is, that's, where, that's the state where they're incorporated in. You don't go to church. People are the church. The church is not a building. One day I wish I wish that people would understand that, but whatever. It's just the amount of ignorance, which is, ignorance just means not knowing something. Uh, when it comes to brain surgery, I'm ignorant. Rocket science, I'm ignorant. The Bible, not so much, but... Uh, Ignorance of the scriptures is just unbelievable. I just, I don't get it. You know, all people have to do is turn off their television for half an hour every day and read the Bible, and they'd read the whole thing from cover to cover in less than a year. Actually, probably be five or six months. So, all right, let's uh, get started here. I want to try to close this out, uh, this study, this whole temple series. So let's go. Verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So i got to tell you um, the ABCs of the flesh. I can't tell you the PhDs in the spirit because you just, you, you know, you're, you're drinking milk. You're not ready for to be weaned from the bottle and start chewing on that meat. You know what happens if you give babies meat? They die. They can't digest. The, the meat will rot in their stomachs and kill them, turning septic. Yeah. Believe it or not, that's true. Verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. What does carnal mean? It's, it means flesh. That's basically what it is. You're in the flesh, not in the spirit. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye, net, uh, are ye not carnal? Uh, who is Apollos? Apollos was a, uh, if I remember correctly, somebody that worked with Paul to minister to these people. He was, you know, a Greek, right? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos 
watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are labors together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Ah, ye are God's building. Huh, isn't that interesting? But the uh, you-know-who's over in the Middle East, they, they want you to think that, oh, well, we got to build a temple for, uh, for our God. Well, yeah, they're going to build a temple for their God. At least I, I think so. I believe that. I don't think I'm wrong. I really don't. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For no, uh, I'm sorry, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Yeah, you want to build your foundation on gold and silver and diamonds and rubies and sapphires? Well, that's up to you. I prefer Jesus, but uh, hey, that's just me. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, I did an entire study on fire. For unbelievers, fire is going to be a bad thing. But for believers... Fire is going to burn up all our earthly, carnal, fleshy works. And hopefully you've got some spiritual works that remain. You know? Fruit. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day, what day? The day of Christ. The day of the Lord. For the... For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So when the Lord burns up your works, and you got something left over, you're going to get a reward for that. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Verse 16, listen carefully. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Wow. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. People, you want to drink yourself? God will let you get cirrhosis of the liver. You want to smoke, whether it be cigarettes or weed or whatever. Um, you know, don't be surprised if you get when you get emphysema and all those other things. You know, you want to eat McDonald's, Burger King. You know, um, 
when I was in business college, I took some computer classes, and we had a saying in computer classes, garbage in, garbage out. And that's, that's just how it is. Garbage in, garbage out. You uh, eat the wrong things, smoke, drink, get sick, and then you're going to pray for the Lord to make you healthy. Um, he might, but chances are, nope, ain't going to happen, chances are. Now, that's I'm talking about, you know, doing things knowingly after you've come to the faith, you know. I mean, I, I, well, I did some bad stuff back in my high school days. I, you know, I OD'd at least once that I remember. My, uh, Mother didn't want to take me to the hospital because she was concerned that uh, I would get arrested, and you know. So she let me sleep it off. She checked on me. She told me she checked on me like every ten minutes. But uh, yeah, but once you come to the faith, that's a different story, you know. Put away those things. The Lord will give you when when you want the Lord more than all the all, all your sins. He'll give you the strength to give them up. He will absolutely, positively will. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Vain means worthless. That they are vain. You know, these people think they're so smart. Oh yeah, well, you know, this, this whole world got here by evolution. Well, you can believe that if you want. I mean, I've met people with doctorate degrees in, from college. You know, that's at least eight years of college. And they absolutely, oh yeah, we're, we got here by evolution. Millions and millions of years. Uh, it takes just as much faith to believe in evolution than it does in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It takes just as much faith to believe one as it does the other. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Oh, yeah. Verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll read verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Oh yeah. 
not the uh, not the big shots, not the Joel Osteens, not the Billy Goat Grams. No, no, no. Take the little old grandmother there that's uh, faithful. Let her judge the matters. Verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 5. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. So here it is. We're supposed to be brothers in the faith. And in Paul's day, they're going before the Romans. I mean, they're having heathens, unbelievers, judging matters between Christians. And it, it's no different today. Verse 7. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Yeah, I'm an expert on that. Be why? Because we trust we trust these people. You know what? Every time I've trusted a church people, I've gotten robbed. That's what I get for trusting them. You actually think these people are Christians. Well, 90% of the time, I don't think so. Maybe 95. Verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. How are they washed? Water with the flesh by ba water baptism? Or were they washed in the blood of Christ? Which is far better than getting your body wet in a pool or, or in the ocean or in a lake. Well, that's my opinion. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he that is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Ah. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, 
and in your spirit, which are God's. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not, be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The Bible teaches separation and segregation. And what does the, uh, what does the world want to do? What, is, what, what does the uh, European Union want to do? And, and the United States government, they want all the satanic heathens from everywhere in the world and bring them to our countries. Think about that. Isn't Europe over, overrun with heathen aliens? Oh, yeah. Their God is not our God. Absolutely not. If they were, it, you know, it would be a blessing. But it's not a blessing. It's a curse. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to be separated, a separated people. But the world wants to mix us all together. The world knows what they're doing. The devil, Satan, he knows. He very well knows. He knows Scripture better than the average churchgoer. He probably knows Scripture better than 90% of the churchgoers. Maybe 95%. I don't know. All right, let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. More of the work of Paul. And boy, you get a lot of people that will tell you Paul's a false apostle. I, anybody tells me that, I don't, even, I don't even think they're saved. They're probably not. They, how can you... How can you have the Spirit of Christ and not hear the voice of someone that Christ sent? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had, we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God who is rich in mercy, praise the Lord for that, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, 
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Oh, here we go. This is why those Paul haters, um, this is why they hate Paul. No, 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 no. By Hebrew roots and uh, calling upon Yeshua HaMashiach and keeping all his laws and being a Noahide, that's how you be saved. Yeah, yeah, keep, keep Noahide laws. You know what? Next time somebody talks to you about the Noahide laws, hand them your Bible and say, can you show me, show me where the Noahide laws are in, are in the Bible? I really, really, I'm interested and I want to keep those Noahide laws that are in the Bible. And guess what? They can flip through every single page a thousand times. They're not going to find it because Noah was never given any laws, not in Scripture. Those laws exist only in the minds of rabid, rabid eyes. Yeah. That's the only place where those laws exist. And, uh, you know, well, you got to call his name a certain way. You got to call him Yamaha Mashiach. Otherwise, you're not saved because you got to call him by that special name. And you got to keep all those laws. You know, you got to be circumcised. Ask, you know, when, they got, when they're circumcised, ask them, was it on the eighth day? Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, did you have a le trained Levitical priest who can trace his ancestry back to Moses and Aaron to do the circumcision? Uh, I don't know. Well, you know what? If they didn't, they didn't keep the law. Guess what? They didn't keep the law. They didn't keep the law back in the old days, and they're not keeping the law today. There's over 600 different laws, and they don't keep them. Ask them if they paid the soldiers' ransom. Most people have never even heard that. The soldiers' ransom. It's like... You, you had to throw a certain amount of uh, silver into the uh, treasury of the temple. Oh, wait, there is no temple. Well, maybe there is, but uh, it's not God's. So if they're not following the law the way they're supposed to, well, guess what? You want to be saved by law? Works of your hands? Or would you rather trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross? I think I'll pick Christ. What do you? What about you? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. No, they'd rather go, they'd rather do Hebrew roots. They don't, they don't want God's grace. I wonder what Christ is going to say to those people in that day. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You see, good works follow faith which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by them which are called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Now, 
why don't you read, turn to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. Read that. And then when you get done reading that, read Jeremiah 31, 31. People are quick to point out and say, oh, these Gentiles, they're not Israel. Jeremiah 3, 8 says God divorced Israel, but not Judah. Think about that. That being that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Why? Because God divorced Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. Well, guess what? In Jeremiah 31, 31, God said that he would make a new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel, both. In Jeremiah 3, 8, he divorced Israel, and in Jeremiah 31, 31, he promised to remarry a new covenant, not a renewed covenant like the Hebrew roots people want you to believe. Stay away from those heretics. They're devils. It's not the renewed covenant. You know, you know why you know why I had to be a new covenant? Because the first one didn't work. It it was the law was fine. But it was us. We couldn't keep God's perfect law with the sin nature of the flesh. There's only one person that ever walked the face of the earth that had a human body that ever kept God's law. And his name was Jesus, who is the Christ. He's the only one. And when these idiots tell you that they're keeping the law, they're liars. Just like their father, the devil. Oh, Bob, you're being awful harsh. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. Verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of of partition between us. What middle wall of partition? The middle wall of partition between Israel and Judah. God didn't divorce Judah like he divorced Israel. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Who was nigh? Judah. Who was afar off? Israel. For through him, Christ, for through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, Oh no, we got access by keeping all those laws and calling them the proper name of Yeshua HaMashiach and uh, being a righteous Noahide. Uh, no thank you. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation, the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord." in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, 
in whom ye are also builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. All right, so turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I have taught on this probably half a dozen times recently, but I got to cover it again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, what is the topic of this? The coming of Christ. That's the topic. That's what the subject is of this chapter in the Bible. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So this is talking about when Christ returns, when we're resurrected, or as the church loves to say, raptured. But rapture doesn't really appear in the Bible, but resurrection does. Verse 2, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, neither uh, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3, Let no man deceive you. Boy, I'll tell you what. Jesus said that a lot of times. And here Paul's saying the same thing. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Perdition means to fall. Judas was called the son of perdition. But there's going to be another. And all these idiots that says, well, you know, it's the imminent pre-trib rapture. It could happen any second. There's no conditions for it to happen. It's the imminent. They say it's imminent. It could happen at any time. But guess what? Paul says, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, the second coming, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So there'd have to be a falling away in the faith first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So... The man of sin, the son of perdition, has to appear before we could even be think about a resurrection, getting out of here. So there, this 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 destroys their their imminent doctrine. But you know what? People are ignorant of the scriptures. They don't bother to read the Bible. It's it's not worthy of their time. Seriously. It's not worthy of their time. Hey, look, football's on. Wow, my favorite sports team. Look at that guy. Man, he can really run that ball. Or baseball, or basketball, or uh, stock car, NASCAR, whatever. Ladies, soap operas, uh, romantic movies, or whatever. Kids. You know, the cartoons or whatever. Uh, it's just... And you ladies that have... Uh, that believe... And, and you got husbands that are... Not doing what they're supposed to do for the... As far as the uh, leadership of the house. Being the spiritual leader of the house. I feel for you. I really do. But uh, the Lord's going to be very harsh for these people that didn't even bother to read the scriptures. He gave warning after warning after warning, and they don't even bother to read it. And your and your churches, they're not going to they're not going to tell you what's going on. You know, if, if people knew that they might have to die for their faith like millions did before them, you think the churches are going to be full of people like Joel Osteen's place? 
I don't think so. No, you'd have a dozen people and maybe, uh, I, I don't even know if there is a dozen people saved in Joel Osteen's church. God knows, I don't. You know, uh, somebody sent, I saw a thing on fake book. It said, everybody's a Christian until the guillotine comes out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How many people were willing to die for their faith? You know, people, people died to give us the scriptures in English. People died so that we could read the Bible in English and people won't even bother. Oh, it's so many different versions, it's all screwed up. Uh, how many times have I heard that? Just the fact that there is so many different versions, 666 different versions, is proof to me because if, if all Bibles were wrong, there wouldn't be any reason to have so many different versions. Well, except for the greed of the publishers, you know. But if they were all wrong, there'd be no reason to have so many different versions. But one of them's right and the rest of them are wrong. Or maybe two of them are right. But uh, I don't know. But people are lazy. They don't read. And Paul and Jesus and the apostles warned them. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now there's even people that will tell you that this happened in 70 AD when the Roman army went into Jerusalem and destroyed Jerusalem. And they'll say, oh yeah, well that's that was that Roman general that wiped out the temple. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now I got a question. Do you think a Roman general would dare go into the temple the temple of the Lord and proclaim himself that he's God and tell the emperor of Rome, that he has to worship him as God? Can you imagine a, a general of the army telling Trump that uh, he's got to worship him, he's God? Uh, they would have him committed to an insane asylum. But Rome wouldn't do that. Rome would have him executed. You know, oh, you think you're God, huh? Well, let's test that theory out. They'd, they'd kill him. The emperor of Rome would take a mere general proclaiming himself to be God and have him put to death. Seriously, you know, uh, I don't think so. So when people tell you that this happened in 70 AD, they're called preterists. You know, they do have some valid points. There were some things that were fulfilled in 70 AD but not this. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, guess what? If this wasn't fulfilled in 70 AD, and the temple in 70 AD was destroyed, this means there has to be another one coming in the future, doesn't it? That's how I look at it. Now, I might be wrong, but if I'm wrong, I'll have to apologize to the Lord for teaching falsely, but I just don't see any other way around it logically. I just don't see it. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. I'm sorry, I don't think the Roman general that destroyed 
Jerusalem was the wicked one. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Did this happen in 70 AD? Did the Lord come back and I missed it? Did you, did you see it? You know, the Bible declares plainly that every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see Christ when he returns. And that is recorded in Revelation 1 and verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Uh, the preterists have to ignore the book of Revelation. They have to spiritualize the whole thing away because it proves them wrong. Oh, well, that's just spirit. That's just spiritualized. You know, that's that doesn't really mean what it says. You know, you could show that to a sixth grader and a sixth grader would have better understanding than a preterist because God blinds their eyes. That's why they can't understand this stuff. So did the Lord consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy the wicked one with the brightness of his coming? Not yet. Verse 9, even him whose working is, uh, whose, I'm sorry, verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Uh, did the Roman emperor show signs and lying wonders? Was he able to do miracles? No. No, and no. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, God, God shall send them strong delusion. Not the devil. God shall send them strong delusion. What's a delusion? Believing something to be true when it's not. You know, I mean, if you were colorblind and you saw a peacock and you said, well, all I see is, you know, black and white, that would be a delusion for you because you'd believe it to be true, but it's not. So, you know, that's, God sends people strong delusion to believe a lie because they want to believe what they want to believe. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There you go. Pleasure in unrighteousness. They wanted the, the, the pleasure of this world more than they wanted the Lord. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Oh my God, Bob. That's, that's, that's Calvinism and that's a heresy. Well, if Calvin understood that God chose us from the beginning, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe Calvin knows something that the, the other people don't. I don't know. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Oh, that sounds like uh, God has a chosen people, doesn't it? Unless, of course, you want to believe the chosen people are the Antichrist over in the Middle East that deny Jesus. I, if you want to believe that, that's up to you, but uh, I don't think so. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good in every good word and work. There's a lot of good stuff here. You know, this is why those Hebrew roots people hate Paul. All this stuff that I just read. Paul gives you a lot of warning about the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, who is called, uh, some places called Antichrist, and then John calls, uh, John of Revelation calls, the beast. They give you a lot of information and a lot of warnings. And they want you to be ignorant of those warnings. They don't want you to know what I'm reading to you. And I know I've probably, I've probably read this chapter a dozen times in the last six months. But it's important, people. It's important. You know, I am guarantee you, when the you-know-whos and the Muslims and the Pope and all your big-name fancy pants uh, TV preachers proclaim that the Messiah has come, the world's going to fall for it. You're going to be the enemy. You're going to say, wait a minute, but the Bible says this. Oh, well, I don't care what the Bible says. It's mistranslated. You know, the Pope told me, you know, or Joel Osteen told me, or Billy Goat Graham's son, or, um, you know, Creflo sent me many a dollar. Or is it Klepto dollar? I forget. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sacred Cow Chipper, for that one. Um, you know, am I picking on Joel Osteen? Oh, yeah. Or uh, what's the other one? My other favorite on TBN. Oh, I can't think of his name. Copeland. Yeah, Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. No, thank you. You watch. All those people, they'll all proclaim, oh, the Messiah has come. Well, people, if you're not caught up in the clouds... To be with him in the air, Christ. If we're not caught up in the clouds in the air when Christ is returning, it's the wrong Messiah. That's one of the most important things you'll ever learn in your life. Keep that in your mind. May the Holy Spirit bring that to mind when the time comes. If you're not caught up in the air when the Messiah is coming, the Christ. It's the wrong one. And the Bible plainly teaches the false Messiah comes first. The false Christ come first. Read Matthew 24. The false Christ comes first. But I, every Baptist church that I've ever been to, oh, no, 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 no. No, Jesus comes first. We're pre-trib rapture. And then after we're out of here, then comes the, you know, the, the false Christ. The Antichrist. That's what they teach. They teach this. I've heard them. And then they, they brag about rightly dividing the word of truth. What are they all possessed of devils? I mean, how is it they don't know these things? I mean, I'm nobody special. I'm nobody special, people. Nobody. I'm a nothing. All I know is what Christ has taught me. And I've been disobedient in my walk in the last 30 years. But how is it that they don't know? Are they, are they, are they secret Satanists? I, I have to wonder. Strong delusion. God sends them strong delusion to believe a lie. Why? Because they bless Baptists. They bless those that hate Jesus. 
Yeah, a little country in the Middle East that hates Jesus, and they bless them. They tell their, teach their people to bless those that hate Christ. You think that pleases God the Father? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I will send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie, that they might be damned. Yeah. Now, what is the definition of an antichrist? Well, let's go to 1 John chapter 2. And verse 22 and 23. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. What is Christ? Christ is just a Greek rendering of the Hebrew, root, uh, Hebrew word Messiah. Same thing. Messiah, Christ, so who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? There's only one group of people in the entire world that I know of that deny that Jesus is the Christ. And they're over in the Middle East and they want to build a temple. And they follow Noah. They want us to follow Noahide laws for our salvation. So who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Tell that to John Hagee. He says that's not true. He says that they, uh, a certain group of people that deny Christ, have a, se a secret back door. He says they have the Father, even though they don't have the Son. Well, John Hagee calls John, the beloved, a liar. 1 John 2.18, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come, I'm, I'm sorry, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. 1 John four three. Now, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Now, what does it mean by come in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. The NIV says he appeared in a body. Well, guess what? Every single person that was born from his mother's womb appeared in a body. And there's seven billion of them on the planet. So what's so special about that? No. God was manifest in the flesh. Second John 1 John 1.7 For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So, Baptist churches love to bless those that are antichrists and those that hate Jesus. So, maybe that's why they believe C.I. Schofield over the scriptures. Maybe that's why they believe in the pre-trib rapture when the Bible teaches we're going to be changed at the last trump. And no, I'm not talking about Donald. And then how many Trumps are mentioned in the Bible? Seven. There's seven Trumps in the book of Revelation. Seven of them. 
And the seventh one is at the end of the tribulation. How about 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Changed how? We're going to be resurrected. We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised. The dead shall be raised. Resurrection. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. At the last trump. In the book of Revelation, there's seven trumps, and the seventh one is the last one, unless you could find an eighth one, or a ninth one, or a tenth one. And the pre-trib liars will tell you, well, you know, there's another last trump be before the tribulation. Really? Where's that in the Bible? Can you show me? They can't. They can't, because it doesn't exist. Well, I thought I was going to be able to finish this Bible study up, but uh, I've already gone an hour, and I haven't even touched the book of Revelation. So I'm going to save Revelation, the best, for last, and I guess I'll make that a part four. And uh, so I've done enough ranting and raving for tonight, uh, today. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.